What's up, friends? We're back with another episode of Ste Reacts, and today we're talking about green juice, green powders to be exact. You know the one, AG1. They sponsor things like Rogan's podcast, Chris Williamson's podcast. They're everywhere. Huberman has backed them. They've now even claiming they've got a scientifically backed study to prove that AG1 can reverse nutrient deficiency and do all of this magical stuff. But a green powders just hype? Are they actually beneficial? Do they have some potential contraindications? Let's go to the internet to find out. For a little bit of background, AG1 is a monster. It's a big business. They were evaluated at $1.2 billion back in 2022, and they're only going from strength to strength. Pretty crazy. Who knew the ground of greens was such big business? Greens powders, here's what I think. The intention is good. You want to get easily digestible, convenient vitamins and minerals in your foods. The execution is bad, in my opinion. These are basically a bunch of grasses, alfalfa grass, oat grass, wheat grass, kale, spinach. You're concentrating defense chemicals. You've got oxalates, which we know contribute to kidney stones. You've got isothiocyanates, which are going to harm your thyroid. And the vitamins and minerals in plant foods we know are not nearly as bioavailable as they are in animal foods. So if you want vitamins and minerals that are bioavailable, meat and organs are the true superfoods and the way to get your nutrients. Greens powders, not so much in my opinion, basically concentrated plant defense chemicals. Great points by Paul, and not only concentrated plant defense compounds, but concentrated sources of potential heavy metals. Like Rhonda Patrick recently showed in one of her tweets that AG1 tested positive for higher levels of lead. Also, not to forget that plant agriculture and the things that are in AG1 and other greens powders that are all essentially the same thing, these green superfoods, have to be pretty heavily sprayed. And they're usually relying on a monocrop style agriculture. So obviously, if you are interested in these, please try and do your due diligence and research to go organic. But no, there are a lot of synthetic pesticides, herbicides, rodenticides, fungicides used in these operations. And because it's so concentrated, so dehydrated and ground up and basically turned into green dust that you're getting super unnaturally high amounts of these things. So concentrated anti-nutrients that can potentially rob you of vitality, cause uh, digestive issues, cause malabsorption of nutrient issues, the thyroid issues that Paul mentioned. And then who knows what other nasties are coming in these, like lead. I, there's no safe amount of lead. And you're getting this with your greens powder. Now you have to weigh, is the cost-benefit analysis worth it? Are you really going to benefit that much from getting the nutrients in these greens powders? Um, be okay with getting on a little bit of potential pesticides or heavy metals or glyphosate? When really, I would think you could be looking at something else, which would be something like nose to tail animal nutrition, organ meats, for example. Again, gram for gram, if you put liver up against any of these green superfoods, kale, spinach, broccoli sprouts, it kicks the crap out of it. It's not even close in terms of nutrient density and nutrient bioavailability, which is the usability index of the food, like how much your body actually extracts, because it's not bound up in the plant matrix of fiber, and it's not bound up in any plant anti-nutrients or anti-nutrients at all. So your body can use all of it because it's food. Plants, a little bit of a different story. So move with caution. Athletic greens? <laughs> What about it? <laughs> I'm asking what you, you want to get sued it. with this podcast. <laughs> Firstly, I think I've tried, or I've tried some greens. I don't know whether it was athletic greens, but I've tried a greens powder. I've tried everything. This was back in the day when I just assumed, to Paul's earlier point, that the intention here is good. It's like a drinkable multivitamin, right? And if I'm not going to eat all of my fruits and veggies like a good little boy, then I can just drink them and get all the benefits. They taste very bad. Like, very, very bad. They're very bitter. They are not good at all. And in fact, some companies have tried to remedy this by putting them with a bunch of artificial sweeteners and flavoring them, like pineapple flavor and whatnot. Again, adding more things to the cocktail of green chemicals that is just adding insult to injury. Not only does it taste bad, not only is it probably not giving you the health benefits that it purports and can potentially be causing uh, unintended consequences, but now you've got a whole host of artificial flavors and ingredients and other nasties on top of it. Never purchased Athletic Greens personally <laughs> or ever recommended it. This is a classic labeling thing that people do where it will be a blend 
and they have to legally like list it by weight, but you don't know what their proprietary blend is like. And they'll be like, oh, it has chlorella and spirulina and all these like magical sounding algae. But then the first ingredient's like spinach. Like it's like freeze dried spinach. And then they put it in milligrams instead of grams. So it sounds like there's a ton of it. Like there's 5,000 milligrams of this in there. And like, <laughs> like if you gut out a scale and try and weigh freeze dried spinach powder at five grams, it's a very expensive multivitamin with like a bit of a soluble fiber, maybe a probiotic a bunch of bioactives. It's never been tested in the formulation that it's in. Good points. And look, maybe the argument can be made that because it's a real food powder and it is coming from plant material and, and actual food, that it's a step up from the synthetic multivitamin. But that's its kind of angle, right? It's the food-based version of a multivitamin, but it's again coming with digestibility issues and potentially an absolute oxalate bomb. We know that greens are some of the biggest contributors to oxalate crystals forming in the body and some of the problems that are associated with that. So it just doesn't seem worth it to me when there are much more bioavailable, arguably tastier. Yes, I know liver is controversial, but I think I'd rather eat a piece of raw liver than I would drink an AG1. It's pretty nasty. AG1, athletic greens. Do you know that there have been companies that have been drying out vegetables and fruits and grinding them up and putting the powder in capsules since 1914? This is not a new concept. There's nothing magical that they're doing at the AG1 factory. It's dehydrated, ground up vegetables and fruits. Literally the same thing the guy was doing back in 1914 when he was, he was also implying that his product would heal anything that you. Yeah, I just also think that if you want these things, why can't you eat them? You know, and just generally go out of your way to diversify and sauce your food and chew it and eat it. I get the appeal to convenience and the fact that you can take this every day and cover all of your nutritional basis. But I think this is just indicative of this hyper convenient culture that we live in. We need everything to be easy. And it's if anything, it's further disconnecting us from our food whilst it claims to support our health. Like if you want to smash a bunch of spinach and kale and that's your choice, power to you, at least go cook it. At least go like, you know, saute it in some garlic and butter. At least like do the real thing as opposed to this mystery blend of whatever's in these greens powders that you really don't know. And again, it's probably coming with some nasty surprises that are, um, you know, unintended to be in that. For the love of God, stop listening to these influencers trying to sell you this vegetable byproduct trash bloom ag1 alani new you name it and i know you guys might think it's super healthy and nutritious because it's green and just marketed that way but i'm telling you now that they're not and my god if only you guys knew the margins they were making by selling you these overpriced lawnmower clippings so please just eat real fruits or veggies or smoothies or juices literally anything is better than this over <laughs> she has had a few funny things in the overpriced <laughs> garden clippings uh, just go eat food is exactly what I was just saying. Just just go eat it. Um, because again, yes, all oh, convenience and I just want this in a shake, but it is expensive, this stuff. And they are profiting massively. You could go buy a punnet of strawberries. You could go buy a full bag. Was actually, you could probably buy 20 bags of spinach for the cost of one of these greens powder drinks. So I just think eat your food, get back to like that thing that we do, like the chewing and cooking, and you're probably not going to go wrong there. This is largely clever marketing, and it's the epitome of greenwashing. You know, it's literally green. Our minds have been tricked to think like green, healthy, greens, eat your greens over and over and over again. I would say eat your colors, you know, go for the fruits. The fruits are nature's offering. They want to be eaten. It's like, look at me, I'm bright, I'm colorful, I'm sweet. And it wants to propagate its seed. You eat it, you walk around, animal in the wild, you poop it out, it continues to grow. Vegetables have this capacity to them where they cannot defend themselves with claws or teeth or, or running away. So they root themselves into the ground and they use these plant defense compounds to ward off predators from eating them. When you, you eat them, you are taking on those things. When you dehydrate these and hyper-concentrate them with a dozen other things that all also have the same defense compounds, you are mega-dosing plant anti-nutrients in the name of health, which just seems a bit backwards. You just want to be skinny. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard. It's bad. It tastes bad. People are doing to this to themselves every day, trying to convince themselves. Yeah, they're it's good. Skinny. What if I told you you could eat steak every day? Drink raw milk, fruit, honey, maple syrup, 
You can even dip your steak in maple syrup if you're a bit of a freak and get skinny and get strong and get healthy that you don't need to force yourself to chug green fish butt juice. It's gross. Don't do it to yourselves, friends. Yeah, so here's a reminder that powdered vegetables aren't good for you. It's a shortcut and shortcuts have consequences. I was actually really surprised to see Andrew Huberman doing like paid sponsored ads, but I gotta say I stopped listening to him a while ago. There was little to no nutritional value that makes eating a powdered vegetable better than just eating a vegetable. In order to powder that fruit or vegetable, you have to dehydrate it, basically concentrate it, right? Unfortunately, when you do that, what happens is that there's a lot of trace minerals and stuff. They don't leave when you dehydrate it, but they get concentrated, right? So the amount that is concentrated within one tablespoon is much more than you might ever have in a day of eating that fruit or vegetable, right? Way more than like a normal serving size. And this is why you end up seeing crazy headlines like toxic amounts of lead in cocoa powder or, you know, high amounts of lead in like baby veggie puff. You tend to grow those vegetables in places that aren't the United States that might have higher amounts of lead in their soil or maybe next to a battery recycling factory, right? And then when all the liquid gets dehydrated and all the metals in there get concentrated, you have a lead contamination problem that you normally would not have had you just eaten that fruit or vegetable the way that it was meant to be eaten. Bingo. You can eat your fruits and veggies and hopefully just have a nice organic, hopefully in an ideal world, shake the hand that feeds you, go to your farmer's market, buy local in season, all of that stuff, and just eat the veg. Or you can drink your hyper-processed fruits and vegetables with a side of arsenic and lead. The choice is yours. So how is Athletic Greens, aka AG1, literally everywhere? They seem to sponsor every single podcast. It's insane. And they're literally valued at $1.2 billion. Well, what is going on here? As somebody who runs a supplement company, I will tell you some supplements right now that you should buy way before you ever buy a greens powder. Athletic Greens is also $79 per month. That's their business model. They're like, oh, we can get people for 80 bucks. Wow, I didn't even know it was that expensive. I knew it was pricey, but 80 bucks a month is wild for some dehydrated greens. Month, we get them this powder. And this powder, well, yeah, there's definitely some good stuff in there. What I call these type of supplements are throw everything at the kitchen sink supplements. Because people don't know what to take. They don't really know what works. So when they see something like this, they're like, oh my God, it's green. There's vegetables in it. There's probiotics. There's vitamins. There's everything in there. So the first supplement you should look for is a good vitamin D. Vitamin D is one of the most researched things ever. It's cloudy right now, as you see in California. Well, not that bad, but you're not getting enough sun to produce vitamin D. Vitamin D is cheap. What Brandon's saying there is that probably before you go to an $80 a month greens powder drink, dial in the basics. He's mentioning vitamin D, which yes, you can supplement and it can be a very beneficial supplement for many people. But again, nature has the solution first. Go get more sunshine. Go eat your food, eat your fruits and your vegetables if you want to. Although we would say that probably not necessary to thrive. Fruits, awesome. Honey, maple syrup, awesome. Protein, red meat, awesome. A bunch of anti-nutrients and plant compounds, not so awesome. But nature always knows. And you can buy this overhyped multivitamin with a very healthy budget for marketing behind it. Or you can just eat real food, get some sunshine, live the way that nature intended and probably be a lot healthier than doing none of that but taking your AG1 every day in the hopes that you'll become superhuman. And there's another deceptive trick I notice about their label. Notice how they list a bunch of ingredients together with the total amount at the top. This is common practice amongst most greens powders and it's a sneaky way of cutting costs and hiding the truth. You see, by labeling the ingredients in this way, you can't actually tell how much of each ingredient is included. Meaning, you have no way of telling if you're getting the clinically effective dose of that ingredient in order for it to actually be effective. Chances are, you're not. That said, if we shift focus and look over at their vitamins and minerals list, they do actually list out how much of each you're getting. And some of them actually seem quite impressive. For example, you get 467% of the daily recommended value of vitamin C and over 1000% of vitamin B7s. Thing is, both of these vitamins are water soluble consume more than your body needs, and you just pee them out, giving you no benefit aside from increasing the financial value of your urine. That's a good point. It looks good to say like, wow, I'm getting, you know, a hundred X the daily benefit more must be better because that's the myth of our culture in so many ways. But all of the excess is just expensive pee. 
And you'd also have to question a little bit there on those stated benefits and amounts. How much is the body actually using? We're back to this bioavailability piece. And we know that not everything that is found in plant material is actually usable by the body, especially when we contrast that against the usability index and bioavailability of similar animal-based foods and similar nutrients. There's also a little bit of interesting information about the backstory with AG1. The founder of the company actually has a criminal background. Chris Ashenden was convicted of 43 breaches of New Zealand's Fur Trading Act, ran an exploitative rent-to-own real estate scheme targeting vulnerable individuals, and he left New Zealand after those legal troubles. This doesn't mean to say the product is nefarious and all of these greens powders are founded by you know, nasty people, but it does indicate that where there's a little bit of the chicanery and hiding of the truth and obfuscating the truth and maybe being a little bit liberal with your ideas and claims that sometimes there is not the most honest person behind these and that you should just, again, take everything with a grain of salt. At the end of the day, AG1, Greens Powders, all of these other brands, they are a supplement. And supplements are okay, but we have to remember what they are. They should be supplementary to a healthy lifestyle, first and foremost. They are not the be-all and end-all. And I worry with messaging like this that most people don't change their behaviors. And because of the sexy marketing behind it, think, well, if I just drink my greens powder, then I'm going to be safe. I've got my vitamin C, my B vitamins, and they don't actually do the legwork to overhaul their lifestyle, to eat mostly whole foods, to manage their stress, to sleep better. If that is the case and you're going down the supplement route, I would always rather go with the real food forward approach. And that is one of the things that greens powders have on their side. At least they are food. But I wouldn't say that they're the healthiest foods. I think what I've got behind me, I think what we produce here at Heart and Soil, animal-based nutrition, organ meats, are vastly superior, more ancestrally appropriate, more nutrient-dense, with less of the funky stuff. And I think if you're going to supplement and you're going to spend your money investing in your health, that's awesome. But make sure you're getting good bang for your buck and value. And that's what you're going to get with something like an organ blend as opposed to a greens powder. There are different stratospheres of usability, bioavailability, and utility. And I think that's what you're really looking for. So hopefully what we can do is help you save 80 bucks a month so you can put that into a gym membership or an extra date night with your loved one. Oh, come on over to heartandsoil.co and actually buy some supplements that will move the needle. And we'll see you next time. Peace.